While I was watching Ram's introduction video of the Ram Revolution EV, I couldn't help but notice a couple drawings on her design board that looks to be sketches of new vehicles that we have never seen before. While we have seen images from Stellantis about future cars the last couple of years, these two stands out and don't fit with the designs of the Ram Revolution EV. But what if I told you that these designs look like a vehicle that Ram already makes and the other one could be a sneak peek into a Dodge car that could be finally making a return. Watching the Ram Revolution introduction video, I slowed down the footage and I couldn't help but notice this sketch. It seemed like it's out of place and it doesn't look like it is inspired by the Ram Revolution. I'm not seeing how this could be a pickup truck just from this raw sketch. It looks kind of harsh. Unless this is an early sketch of a Dakota replacement, Ram said they would show the dealers later this year. That seems to be the most logical explanation for why the sketch would appear in a Ram video. The vertical line going through what looks to be a tailgate could be a sign that this is a truck with Ram's multifunction tailgate. But this sketch does look oddly familiar to a truck that Stellantis currently offers overseas. The Fiat Toro is assembled in Brazil and is also rebashed into the Ram 1000 for other markets. The Ram CEO last year was asked some questions at the Detroit Auto Show and said that Ram was looking to add smaller trucks to the lineup and even trucks smaller than midsize. So that could open the door for the Ram 1000. Ram could do some sheet metal changes to the existing truck and ship it to the US. The Ram 1000 shares the same architecture with the Jeep Renegade, the Jeep Compass, and the Fiat 500 models. So that should give you an idea about the size of this particular vehicle. Currently, the Ram 1000's biggest engine is the inline four Tiger Shark, which makes 184 horsepower and 179 foot-pounds of torque. This same engine is used in the Old Dart, the Cherokee, the Renegade, Promaster City, and the Compass. The Ram CEO also said that Ram wasn't getting the inline four Hurricane so I wonder if that's still true or if he's on the reference in the Ram 1500. But I would have to believe that Ram would use one of the turbocharged inline four Hurricane engines in order to compete with a Ford Maverick mid-size pickup truck. Another thing I noticed is that the Fiat Toro has a split tailgate matching the split in the sketch. So this could very possibly be the beginning sketches of a reskinned Ram 1000 coming to America. Another possibility is the Ram 700 which has been around for a few years in the South American and the Mexican markets. Looking at the bulge in the fender from the sketch, the Ram 700 could also be the basis for a new Ram model. The Ram 700 is a little bit smaller with a 107.8 inch wheelbase compared to the Ram 1000's 117.7 inch wheelbase. For comparison, the Ford Maverick has a 121.1 inch wheelbase and the Hyundai Santa Cruz has a 118.3 inch wheelbase. So if Ram wants to make a new pickup truck, they can use the small and the medium sized trucks from the other markets, change in sheet metal some, produce them at existing plants, and quickly bring a new truck to the US market. With the Belvedere plant closing down and Brampton not having a vehicle confirmed after 2023, Ram does have some options if they wanna make those trucks closer to the US market at those plants. Another thing I find interesting is that both Unifor and the UAW are going to do contract negotiations this year with the big three. And like the last time, we learned there was three new Hellcat variants coming, so we could learn this year what new vehicles are coming for Ram and where they could potentially be built. I've said in videos in the past that Solana's goal in the future is to share parts as much as possible in order to cut costs. As well as a new mid-sized truck. Now we're working on these vehicles together, which allows us to share some of the most costly components in a way never before done. So eight vehicles are now being created that will come to market in the next three to five years. But that's just the beginning. So no way I see Rand creating a new truck from scratch rather than just adopting an existing platform. I was thinking that the Jeep Gladiator would make a good platform to share for the Dakota, but I think it's too long at 137.3 inch wheelbase. Ram said they wanted to go mid-size or smaller and the Gladiator doesn't seem like it will work at that wheelbase size. 
Now the next interesting drawing really doesn't make sense to be in Ram's video. This picture is only visible once and it clearly shows a two door hatchback like vehicle. First I was thinking this was a concept drawing for like a Chrysler Airflow, but the profile in the taillight section doesn't add up. Now I have no idea what this vehicle is, but it does often look like a Dodge Viper. It does like a two door, which will only be a handful of vehicles. The Dodge Challenger, the Charter Daytona EV, the Maserati Gran Turismo 4 Gore EV, or the regular versions, the MC20, and the Viper. This design looks very close to what I would think a new Viper would become. You got wide rear fenders, maybe some long tail lights like before, integrated wing, maybe a hatchback. Hopefully if this is a Viper or a Tomahawk or some other model, I cross my fingers that it won't be EV only and Dodge positions this as a competitor against the CA Corvette. Since the 6.2 Hemi is being dropped, most likely if there is an ICE version, we will see a Hurricane inline 6 engine. With that big of a hatch area, maybe this could be a mid-engine vehicle like the C8 Corvette. A inline 6 Hurricane would fit in a mid-engine scenario. Solanus also said they'll get a hybrid transmission from Punch Powertrain that could get the power up in a mild or plug-in hybrid situation. Now I don't know how much horsepower it will increase to, but there are torque specs listed for this particular hybrid transmission and it could get the vehicle around the same power of a CA E-Ray. Just saying. Now I'm not confirming that a Viper is coming, but it does look a lot like a Viper and this will be a great addition back into Dodge's lineup. Dodge does have a way to bring the Viper back, or maybe this can use a Tomahawk name, but they can bring this vehicle back by using the Maserati's NC20 architecture. It'll allow the Viper to have a mid-engine configuration, a hardtop convertible option, a plant for the Viper to be made at, a carbon fiber tub, and have butterfly doors. Looking at the MC20, the Viper, and the C8 Corvette dimensions, the MC20 and the C8 are very close to one another. The main difference is length, and the Viper is several inches shorter than either of those cars. So other than missing the V10 and being several inches longer, but I think at the end of the day they could shave a couple inches off on the platform, the NC20 would be a perfect base to make a next gen Viper. I've already covered the reasons for the NC20 to be used in this video right here, so go ahead and check that one out. These two sketches are very interesting and let me know down in the comments what you think these vehicles could potentially be. The first sketch looked for sure that we could see one of those smaller Ram trucks come with some seat metal changes and Ram said dealers will see something in the next few months. And considering Ram couldn't make a working prototype for the Ram Revolution that could open its own doors or close its own front, I don't see a brand new truck from scratch, but rather a rebadged existing vehicle, especially if this has to come to market by 2025. And the second sketch for sure is a wild card and could be a variety of different vehicles if it ever gets made. I would love for it to be a Viper or a car with a Tomahawk name that Solanus has available to them. But that's it for this video guys. Make sure you leave this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you already done so. Leave down in the comments what you think these vehicles can be. Make sure you grab yourself some last call merch on the way out. And until the next time, I'm out.